it's Frank. Today I'd like to draw a quick um, drawing of a character that really inspired me as a kid. Uh, but I'm going to do a cartoon, um, really parody version of it. And that would be uh, Dragon's Lair, Dirk the Daring. So let's see, the first thing I want to do is create the first layer and as you can see I have the layers uh, right here layer in the background and what I'll do is start right on this line here and let's see what happens so the first thing I want to do is create his face and let's see Now, I remember he's got a like a big nose, so let me exaggerate that a little bit. And then if we continue that line, he's got a unique chin. And then you could see a little bit of his ear. He does have hair, but we're not going to draw the hair. Let's go to our eraser and clean this up a little bit. Now this is all out of my my mind. I'm just trying to remember what what he looked like. The thing is, I have to um, keep it as a parody so I'll make it a little bit different so now that I have the nose and the face I'm just gonna add the details and let's see how I do that so here's where the eyes would go Now I could draw the eyes here, but when you're animating and creating a s s character to add a skeleton to, I like to um, just create the eye eyelids, and then I could go back in and add the eye eyes right right on top of that. So the next thing I'd like to do is just he has this. Um, chainmail on which is um, like a form of um, like armor so I'll add the armor here and then his mouth would go here his mouth will probably extend out from under his nose a little bit I'm gonna make it like exaggerated and his ear is already within the, the chain mail so that wouldn't get any more detail. So now that I have that, I want to create the little um, closed mouth here. Then I'll add like a little chin, not a chin, a little lip. And then I'll have his open mouth here. I'll just color this in while I'm here. I was um, a tiny kid in the arcade and all the arcades were filled with all the great games like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. and Tron and all these other cool inspiring games as, as a artist back then I was just starting out I was just learning all about it but I was always a big video video game arcade fan 
Uh, so what happened was I was in there and saw Dragon's Lair and it was animated and I was like wow that's amazing and that game has been a huge inspiration ever since and right now I'm just drawing the different mouths these are important if you're going to do like a little series of animations or dialogue you generally have one, two, three, four, five different mouths. And let's see what this one will be. This one should probably have his teeth in there a little bit. And then you could just draw the I could just draw the, the tongue on the bottom part of the mouth. So then I'll just fill this in really quick. If I use the paint uh, paint bucket, it kind of like leaves like an edge to it. So I'll just do that manually. Um, as far as this face, let's see. I'm going to add a the uh, the neck to the character. This way, it's easier to animate his whole head versus just the, the neck. Because if I keep the neck separate and then just have his head rotate on the neck, it's a little trickier. So now that that's done, I want to add a, um, like his, um, he's got like a helmet on top. So we'll just do something like that. And then draw that line there and then continue up to that point and then I remember it's got this going across I think and this is like a metal helmet that he wears on his face and then we'll draw this piece here but I want to add something um, different about it. I could think probably think of something a little later. Um, but let's see. I guess I could have like an arrow or something on there. Maybe like a bird or something. as like a emblem or a symbol doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it's just for a parody so I'm not too worried about it so it looks like I'm going to run out of space here pretty quick and I have the face I have the helmet I need to draw the, the arms and the legs and the torso so the first thing I have to do is add the torso and let's just draw that a little shorter, smaller here. And one thing I wanted to do for this um, torso is exaggerate it a little bit. And the way I'll do that is here's his upper torso and then I'm going to give him a, a little bit of a belly so he's not exactly in the great shape he is in the video game so we'll just add a like a, a belly to him and then I have to draw the part where the legs connect so that'll be that right there and then he's got his belt on so we'll draw the belt Actually, it's a clumsy point to start the belt on because it just continues that line. So let me just put the belt over here. 
And it could just be a regular belt, nothing fancy. And then we'll just continue the line over there. And then for the stomach, let's see if I want to have that as, yeah, I want to just blend that in a little bit. That's better. But yeah, I want to add some humor to this since it's a, it's a parody. I don't want it to be a, a replica or anything like that. Alright, so now that that's there, I have to draw the arms. And the arms, let's see, maybe I should draw the leg first. Then I could draw the arm here. So the leg, <clears throat> let's see, it's very expressive leg. I'd probably want to start here and then draw the knee and then he's got these really big shoes so let's exaggerate that a little bit <laughs> that's kinda of funny but then he's got boots on so let's get the boots on there So that was easy enough. There's his leg. I could probably even fit the arm right here. But I have to create a sword. But let me do the arm right here. Should I add the hand to the arm? I think I'll just have like a fist. So here's... He's got like a... Armor over his shoulder. And then his arm extends out of it. He's got these really expressive hands. Now I'm not trying to replicate the the style of Don Bluth since this is just a a parody. And then we'll just draw this line here. He doesn't wear gloves, but I think maybe for this version gloves could be kind of cool to see. He could always just, I could always just do that. So then, next thing I want to do is just add just a couple dots here. Make it look like some kind of bolts or something. Next thing I want to do is add the, the hand. The first hand I'll do is like an expressive hand like that nothing fancy or perfect or anything like that just a simple hand that could go either way for a hand that is facing you or with the palm this way the it, when I put the palm in there I'll just draw a line here but for now I'll leave it open. So he's got those two hands and that's pretty much all you really need for a really simple um, animation. So the next thing I'll do let's see he's got like a collar so I could probably add the collar right here that would be better. And then you could add some stuff here if you want. And then I could do that here probably too. Just like little rivets to show some sort of um, um, metal type material. And then the next thing, he always wears like a, a backpack. I could probably put it right here and that would be fine. <clears throat> I don't know if, uh, maybe I'll just skip that. He never really uses it for anything. So then the sword, we could just um, do something really simple here.
almost like a, a big knife or something, you know? Real clumsy looking sword. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of Dragon's Lair. So creating a parody of it is, is really inspiring and fun. Now there was a... Let's see, I don't think I'm going to add that line in there. Now there's a... 2015 Dragon's Lair... Uh, pitch presentation that Don Bluth created. And that was pretty awesome. He was creating a new short uh, animated film that would be like maybe a minute or two long. And what it would do is help promote and help sell a new pitch for a new animated Dragon Slayer film, which I was really happy to hear. I was like, wow, that would be amazing. Because I'm such a huge fan of the first video game, Dragon's Lair. The sequel was neat, but I felt it got too far away from what made the first one so cool. Where Dirk the Daring was fighting monsters, and he was in the castle the whole time, and going through all these um, obstacles. And that was a big inspiration for my animated uh, cartoon, The Chicken Chop Shop where I had chickens going through a, a really crazy factory where each room was like a new trap. And I originally did an animation for that uh, back in college, uh, way back in 1997, 98. But there it is, that's just a quick cartoony look to uh, this character. See, you could put like a um, one of these belly buttons there, but let's see. I don't think it's necessary. See, he's going to be wearing a shirt anyway. Now the next thing I'll do, now that I have this basic stuff completed, well, I could add a backpack, but that would go like right here. What would be funny instead of a a backpack hmm well I was going to make it like really giant and have it on there but then I was like well I was trying to think of what would be a good backpack I think I'm probably just going to leave it off it's just you're not going to see his back anyway half the time or any of the time this is just going to be for a short um, little trailer type parody. So I don't have to get too detailed with it. I think that'll work. I, I have the key elements of what I'm going for here. Oh yeah, I have to create the eyes. <clears throat> so See, that would be the wrong eye shape. I also have to create the eyebrows and his eyebrows are kinda like that I don't know I'm trying to visualize it you, I wouldn't want to do that so I'll just leave the eyebrows there and then for the eyes I'm actually running out of space here, so it's hard to get the right style here. But I'm visualizing something like this. And then, of course, his, his eyeball would be like that, maybe. I should have studied it a little bit more. I think he's got, like, little dots for eyes. Nothing, no big pupils or anything, kind of like that. But because I'm animating those dots, I could just use that, but I'll just add another one right here. This will be the iris, the pupil. And 
and that eye looks pretty decent for what I'm what I'm going for. You could always add some expression and have like a eye that's like wide open. This eye will be more mean type eye, and then you just reverse it over here and have it over there. But yeah, I think those two eyes will work for the eyeballs. So that'll be okay for now. I could probably extend the chin a little bit, but the nose, I really want to exaggerate a little bit. He's always had like a unique nose. Um, but then this part here, I could probably do something like that. I don't think that's necessary though. I'll leave that out. Because this helmet's going to be on there anyway. I'm going to have this kind of like wobble and bounce all over the place. But there it is. That's the first sketch. So what I want to do is layer, duplicate, and then jump down to this layer. And now let's just re actually let me refine these lines a little bit. Give them a little more finesse. And the way to do that is to take your um, eraser and I'll go in there and just chisel off the, the edges a little bit. And that will give the lines a little more character. It's very subtle but instead of like a big blunt clumsy looking edge to the line it creates like a curved almost like calligraphy to the line and it really makes a huge difference it really adds a lot of character to your lines I always like calligraphy even though I never learned how to actually draw excuse me write in calligraphy I've used a calligraphy pen to draw but never actually right in the calligraphy style in real paper real pen for real paper and pen I'll still draw on paper but most times I just draw on the computer now it's just so much easier to have the image already on the computer although you get way more detail on paper like with this pen it's like great but I can't get the the lines that I'm going after so there it is I'm pretty happy with that um, exaggerated weird looking version of this character uh, which I'll give him a, a parody name and a different style to him. Next thing I want to do is paint the character. So what I can do is just delete this layer here. Delete. And now I have just this to work with. Just the lines. So you'll see uh, the difference here. And let's see. I'll go with um, are there any uh, light colors in this? I could go with like a gray for the helmet. Maybe a, a dark gray or a light gray. I think that'll be alright. So I'll just paint this piece in here. And then, hmm. I think this piece too, that would be okay. And then the sword is, I think, yellow for the hilt. And then, let's see this I'll paint too and the, the teeth and then this piece here alright so now that I have that is there oh yeah the eyeballs kind of like a gray white color actually the eyeballs I'll make those lighter I'll just go with that right there there we go that's better 
even the the teeth you could probably do that for so there we go with that and next thing I'll do is he's got like a red color but I'm gonna vary it up so instead of making his shirt red hmm, thinking I can switch that up to this so the armor edges would be red instead and this could be like yellow was there any other red I think um, not that I can remember so then the yellow will go not too bright yellow that's good right there so we'll just what I'll do is I'll just um, paint this in yellow let's see is that a good yellow no it's too too bright I need a little more orange there we go that's the that's the color I was going for so we have that and then actually I have to paint this that color too and then his arms hmm think that was like a tannish color hmm, I'm trying to remember anyway I'll paint this uh, sword hilt yellow and then I could continue on uh, let's see actually let me um, vary it up even more and he, it was actually orange. I don't think he had yellow. But that's good. I'll just switch it up. I'm not going, going for replica here. As long as it gets the idea, that's all I'm worried about. So we'll just add some orange to his arms. And then <clears throat> I know his belt was orange. So I'll vary that up too. <clears throat> uh, but before I get to that, let's see, I wanted to paint <clears throat> Well I know his shoes are like a uh, like a light brown. So <clears throat> I think I would vary that up a little bit. Kind of like that. See his, his, yeah, this part, I'm trying to remember if this was that color. But, let's see, maybe we should switch this color up a little. It's a challenge doing it this way because I'm not positive how it's going to look until you piece it all together but I'm not going to wait till the end to, to paint it all in so now that I have that actually I'll paint his belt that color too instead of orange I'll paint his belt brown and then we have the sword I have to paint that in we'll just go with a dark gray for that now with cell shading there are no on this character there are no no shadows or shading it's just flat color and then I have to create the, the tongue that's good and that that'll work there then for the the eyebrow I'll just go with a dark gray that's fine 
he's getting older. And then we have to go back to the torso and get that color in there to match the leg because that's going to be part of his leg. This yellow, I, I don't know if that's going to work, but let me just make it a little more, a little more, um, A little more saturated, maybe. Like that, maybe. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. <clears throat> then for the sword, I could just do that. And then for this, I think I'll just extend this right into that. And that'll be extension of his chain mail here because it goes right into you put it over your head and it goes right into his shirt so next thing I'll do is add the color to his face and let's see to get it the right tone. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. I didn't want it to match that too much. But I think that'll work. And then I'll just draw his peen in his hands. And that's it. There are all the pieces. So the next step is to see how you see how I like it and then I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'll just um, take this piece here and merge it down, or I could just delete it. It's it's up to uh, what I want to do here. I think I'll I think I'll merge it down since I'm not going to use it again. And then now these colors are not meant to be replicas of the original character. They're meant to be a variation. So next thing I'll do is, let's see, there's this neat um, tool under generic called dilate. Before I do that, let me uh, select all the pieces. You, you use this tool here, which is called the select by color tool, and I have the threshold at 40 one percent about <clears throat> excuse me and then what I'll do is select the outside just right here and then you have to select invert so it'll select all your stuff there it is and then with this if I want to reduce the thickness of those lines let's just see what this would look like under generic dialing it like expands things. <clears throat> um, in other words, it'll take this color, push it outward while this these lines get smaller. So it's not so overwhelming with the, the dark lines. I just want to see what this looks like. It's taking forever. Usually it's a little quicker. This is usually red but I want to see what it looks like as yellow. And this here is usually orange. And this is orange. And this is like a... I think it's like a tannish color like this. A, brown, a dark, a light brown. So I, I varied it up intentionally, but we'll see how it looks. It's not meant to be exactly like Dirk. It's like a parody of him. All right, we're just waiting to see what this does. If it doesn't work, I'll undo it. So here we go. This drawing is taking a while, but it's pretty fun. I'm enjoying the process here. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Hmm, 
kind of like made it a little jagged edge, but I like the the lines on that. It's more refined. So I think I'll go with that. Next thing I'll do is um, layer duplicate because I want to make sure that there's no lines bleeding through. Um, in other words, if the paint didn't cover everything, by creating a duplicate, it'll fill in any gaps uh, that might have been visible. So now that I have that, what I could do is just do a quick blur. And that'll soften up some of the jagged edges here. Let's see how that works. There it goes, finally. Yeah, that helped a little bit. Now this at 50%, let's see what that line looks like. See, it's a little bit jagged, but it's not bad. That's a little rough there. One thing you can do, if you don't like that, is I could go under Oilify, and this is a really cool tool. Uh, let's see, that's sometimes it jams up so I have to go out and then jump back in so now it'll work or hopefully no it's not working still not working that's weird let's try that one one more time jeez what the heck it's not working at all now that, that's unusual None of these tools are working. That's usually uh, some kind of glitch that's happening. Okay, so what we have here is the, um, the character. And next thing I'll do, since that tool is um, not working as it should, It's the filter under artistic and oilify. Normally this tool would allow me to actually press the buttons, but none of them are working. I can't even cancel it. So something's uh, messed up with the tool. If I exit out and then come back in, it, it sometimes works normal again. Sometimes you have to shut the whole software down. So that's one of the uh, weird glitches of this program. It's called GIMP. And let's see, the next thing I'll do here is separate all these pieces. So the first thing I'll do is edit after I select it, I'll do edit, copy, edit, cut, and then edit, paste to new layer. And that creates the new layer right there. And then I'll just make that visible if, for now. Then we'll just keep going to the other parts, copy, cut, paste, and then to new layer. And now we'll go with this. There we go, and we're almost finished with the mouths. I forgot to give this like a little lip. I, 
could add it in really quick right here. Otherwise, it'll look weird if it disappears all of a sudden. So we'll just continue on with this piece for the eye. There we go. Then we'll get the eyebrow, select it, copy, edit, cut, and then paste to new layer. And we're moving along. You can see the pieces are starting to disappear, but I'm running out of room for the square. So I'll just manually select that. Edit, copy, edit, cut, edit, paste to new layer. Alright, well that's weird. I don't know what happened there. Oh, I, I know what happened. It's on the wrong layer. Edit, copy, edit, cut, edit, paste to new layer. That's the eyebrow there. So then, let's keep going. We'll get this other eyeball. And this is how I do my character creation for all of my my characters. Look at this. There's something messed up with this tool. It shouldn't be dragging across like that. Plus I just... Oh, okay, there it is. I was like, why is that still showing up? So let's get the full face of this character the full skull there we go edit all right we're moving along let's go to his torso actually let's make sure I get that whole stomach in there There we go. So now we're almost finished. Uh, let's see. I'll get the helmet next. You could go in any order you want. There's nothing specific about this because you you're going. I'm going to rearrange everything anyway. I have to give it all names. And the names help me identify it without having to look at the actual drawing. Like in a list, I'll see it right away, I'll know what it is. And that's really helpful for animation. Like in the uh, uh, Anime Studio Pro. So here we are, we're almost finished. There's three parts left here. And then the leg. And the reason I only create one leg, where'd that go? There it is. And then finally the sword. And one arm is because I duplicate them.
So now we have all the all the pieces. So let's assemble this character and see what he looks like. This is the first time I'll see him as a character. And let's see, the first thing I'll do is reduce the scale of his, his head a little bit. And the way to do that is select the scale tool Make sure that chain is connected instead of unconnected. If it's unconnected, you have more uh, variation, but if it's connected, it'll stay consistent. So let's just shrink it down a little bit. I'd say that's pretty good for that body. I want it to be exaggerated. So let's put that there for now. And then there's the uh, torso. And let's get that arm on there. The arm on the front. that's going to go right about there before I do that let me duplicate it and bring it all the way to the bottom And what I'd like to do is just rotate it. So his arms aren't going straight down there at, a, at an angle. It makes him look a little more, more relaxed. So we'll just put that there and angle it down there a little bit. That's good. So we could exaggerate his um, the top of his hat over here, or we could get a little more proportion to his face, his skull. I think that'll be good right there. Then next thing I'll do is throw this hand right about here that's weird <laughs> I just had the hand there it is yeah it looks like I'll have to cut the other hand from the drawing Before I do that though, let me um, duplicate this and then I'll bring this way down here for the other arm, carry this over here. And then I'll just rotate it. that. Now I'll zoom in this is a little choppy here but I, I think I'll adjust it before it's all over with this drawing. 
if that tool works. If it doesn't, I'll have to do it later. So I'll go back into my paintbrush and let's see, we're just going to add that line and then with our smear tool we'll just clean that up a little bit. There we go. That's what I was going for. And then see how that hands a little different. I should have named it before I duplicated it. It's no big deal though. So next thing Say we'll go to fifty percent. And then let's get that eyeball in place, but should I do that now or later? Let's see, the first thing I'll do is get the eyes, so let's get those. Those are a little trickier. There's the main eye. Let's bring that down and see what it looks like. We have to proportion it to the pupil. So we'll shrink it down a little. And then let's see what this looks like. We have to, I keep saying we, but I'm the, the one drawing here. I have to reduce the size of it to match that eyelid. Or I could just increase the size of the eyelid to match the eye. I kind of like that right there. I don't want to shrink the eye too small. So let me duplicate this. Actually, before I do that, We'll just call it I1 and let me duplicate it here and I'll rotate it layer flip horizontally and then I'll pull that over here and now I have to compress it then adjust it slightly. Yeah, I think that'll work. That's what I was going for. So I'll just merge that down and I have to adjust his eyes. So one way his eyelids. So one way I'll do that is have these be invisible, then jump back to the face and use my smear tool to drag that line to extend it or I could just draw it. I think I'll just draw it. I think that'll be easier. So I have to come in here and draw that line but that line's too too big. That'll work. Now let's go to our smear tool and it's not really a it's called a smudge tool. One nice thing about the smudge tool is it can fix some jagged edges too. So it's a really great tool. And we'll just clean that line up there. And 
And now we'll go back to our eyes and get that opacity back to 100%. So when he blinks, see it's more aligned with his his eyes there. We'll just fix this really quick here. There's a lot to drawing a character and it takes a lot of time. I could go really quick with it, but there's a, a joy in this whole process to create this character, um, parody character, and see how he looks as I'm creating him. So there it is. It's not too bad. And then we'll just see what the pupil looks like. I have to figure out which one that is. I think that's it right there. So we'll bring that down here. Hmm, where'd it go? There it is. That might be too big. Let's see. I'll shrink it down a little. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's better. So what I'll do is, since these are merging, I don't have to name it yet. This one absolutely has to shrink but also has to be compressed a little bit too. There we go. Otherwise when that other eyeball moves it won't fit inside. So I could go like that and have it right be at the edge or I could have it be right about there. One way you could test it is to link the two pupils and then just move it like that. It might be a good idea to have these separate so then I could have this be way up there at that corner and then have the left one be over there. Hmm. Anytime you make significant progress it's a good idea to save it. See this belt I need to refine that. The jagged edges are pretty bad on that. Alright so we'll get that back to rest position and now I have to decide if I want to have the eyeballs together or separate. Sorry, the pupils. If I combine them, then I won't be able to get this pupil all the way up here but hmm, I don't know. I think I'll just go f merge them together and go from there. So there's the uh, pupils of the character and then I have these more expressive eyes here. We just bring this up here. We'll reduce the, the black line through the dilate tool. 
this way it's not so overpowering I think that'll work duplicate transform vertical I mean horizontal see that nose is a problem. I have to overlap the nose. So what I'll do, I need to go back in there and grab the nose. So let's get closer to the character's face Just grab that edge of the nose right there. And then we'll create a duplicate. I'll create a duplicate. And now that I have copy paste, I won't cut this. I'll just create a duplicate of it. And that'll overlap the original nose. And we'll just put it above the the other eye. Alright, so we have the pupils and then we have the other eye. See how that's overlapped? There we go. If I didn't <clears throat> didn't over overlap the nose, hmm. Maybe I didn't have to overlap the nose. Is that the nose? Oh yeah, there's the nose. This is not the nose. So if I don't overlap the nose, that's what it looks like. That's not bad. I mean, that's not what I'm going for, but I think I'll just keep the nose in there for now. So with these two eyes, I'll merge them down. Now we'll put the mouth in place. Let's just zoom over a little. There we go. And the first piece is the the ooh mouth. We'll just clean this up a little. And then we'll shrink the size of the, the mouth. Oh yeah, maybe I will have that nose in there because that will help overlap the nose over the mouth since his nose is so prominent. So there's the uh, the ooh mouth. Here's the M mouth.
that's like the rest mouth. And then we have the um, the ah mouth. He's probably not going to talk. I don't know. I don't know what I'll how I'm still working on the uh, the story. I have an idea of what's going to happen though. And then we'll just clean the line up and give it some sharp edges. Give it actual style. You see how that cleaned up the jagged edge there? That's really nice. I could reduce the size of this a little bit. And then we have, that's the, uh, now we have this mouth, the, the T mouth. This is a really critical mouth for a uh, talking animation just like the other mouths. Yeah, see how nice that overlap is? It gives the character more personality versus if if I didn't have the nose in there. Look at that. So the nose really helps. That's what I did with the character Fred. His nose was uh, really large so I had to overlap it over his mouth. And this is the O mouth. This mouth is mostly unnecessary unless you want to add a few more variations to your mouths, which keeps it more interesting. But there we go. Um, I think that's about it, right? Now the eyebrows are way too big here. We want to make them almost like lines. Hmm. I got the right layer here. Oh yeah, I know what's happening. There we go. I had to detach the link so it wasn't linked together. Now I could rotate that uh, eyebrow right now or I could do it in the animation. It, it's probably better just to do it in the animation but since he's always going to have like kind of like a uh, upset look to him Maybe we can do it right now and just keep that as the default. Then again, let's see if I pull this down. That's good, right there. Did Dirk have eyebrows in the video game? Hmm have to look at the picture again. I have a visual image of him in my mind right now, but the very specifics, like the eyebrows, yeah, he. I think he does have some sort of expression with his, his, his eyes are very expressive.
So usually eyebrows cover the eyes, so I'll put them up here. The higher the level is in the layer list, that means it'll overlap what's beneath it. Layers are one of the greatest things of all time. I was in school working on Photoshop and then I remember they said oh they just introduced layers into Photoshop. I think that was I don't know if that was just on their software that we just got at the school or if it was Adobe that added the layers themselves that year but that was um, I think it was 1990s late 1990s maybe 94 95 but I remember thinking wow layers that's so cool at first I was a little concerned like well how's that gonna be useful right it seemed like a weird thing, layers. And then they explained it, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. Alright, so now that we have the leg there, image fit canvas to layers, we could scroll down now and see the leg. And that's not the size of the leg I want. So let me um, zoom in a little. Yeah, I might have to paint that like orange. Yeah, that's not the right color for his shirt. I'm going to go right into his shirt right now. Change the color. Yeah, that's better already. Just to make it look a little more varied. The yellow is too overpowering. Alright, so with the leg... the leg I want to let's see so the sword you can put it right there if I want Then I could angle it down a little bit. That's good. And here we go, we got the leg. The leg I'll bring down to the torso, which is right here. The layer beneath is the other hand with the palm facing out, and then there's the arm beneath it. Now the arm beneath it, I have to do this. have to um, erase these lines here and then go back in and add these fingers
there we go. So it makes sense. Uh, his, otherwise, his hand would be backwards. I just have to adjust this somehow by probably just keeping it separate from the arm as a separate layer. To do that, I just go into here. It looks like I have to do it no matter what, so. Before I do that, so yes, Dragon Slayer came out, I think it was 1983, and that really uh, was amazing game to look at, but to play it, it was not very responsive, and it was very difficult, and and, and the arcade, I just watched the other players play it all, most times, but uh, that gave me time to really admire the the whole vision of the game. And that really helped me take in all the visuals, so I wasn't focused on the the action of the game itself. I was just focused on, wow, look at that artwork. Look at the monsters and all the cool stuff going on. See, now I, I can do it. Now I can have that hand without the back showing through. That's it. That's how to do it. So then with the other arm, let's do that while we're right here. And I'll just uh, go in there and cut that out. There we go. And if you're still with me, thanks for continu continuing to watch. This is a long process. For me, it's a lot of fun. I really, really like this. It's something that really... It's like so relaxing and peaceful and nothing's bothering me. It, drawing is one of the greatest things in, in the world for for me, so I'm really happy i able to just focus on this in this moment for this time I'm doing it. I had to set time aside for it, but I feel it's worth it. I, I really think it's a fun process and it's challenging at the same time alright so now we'll go down to here and if you're an artist or aspiring artist and want to get better you just keep drawing whatever inspires you and is fun to draw Some artists will draw like the same eyeball over and over, and that's what I I would do when I first started trying to figure out a style that I wanted. I was like, let me draw a whole bunch of eyeballs and see which style I want to really focus on. So now that I have this leg here, I have to be careful. I don't want to make it too exaggerated. Let me take a look. Will that leg be appropriate for the style? I think so. I think that's the right length to the leg. I have to extend the arms. But now that I have what I think will be okay for the leg, I have to adjust the torso here. And just get rid of this line because it's in the way. There we go. Now with the leg, I'm going to 
do that filter dilate again. The only problem with dilate is sometimes you get like a um, light, uh, a white line around the outer black edge, so that could affect your, your drawing a little bit when it's against a dark background. So now that we have that leg, let me just um, get my eraser and erase that top part there. It's in the way. There we go. The face, I don't know. I'll see what I what's going to happen with the face. I'm not so sure about it yet. It's still a work in progress. So what you see here could be different in the final drawing. I might just redo the whole face. I don't know yet. So now that I have that leg in place, I'll just duplicate that, push it under the torso, and then pull the leg up over here. Now I have the second leg. Image fit canvas to layers. There we go, it fit. Now the shoes are, are ridiculously gigantic, but that's part of the, the parody of this character. Alright, so that's that. Now I have to get the arms. Let's get those. What I could do is link all the pieces together, select the arm, and then do a transformation, which is scaling. And then just rotate that like that, and then, well not rotate pull it, stretch it, and then that will extend this arm too since it's linked. Yeah, that's more proportion now. And then unlink them since I won't need to adjust it after that. So now we'll look at it with his sword in his hand. Move that down to his hand. Hmm. That's kind of what I was going for. I think that might work. I don't know. I'll, I'll see how it looks animated. I like to zoom out and get a better view of it. But thanks for watching today. Should that sword be a little more pronounced? I, I kind of like it like that. That's like real cartoony. Um, if it's, yeah, I think it's more funny like that. Almost like a dagger instead of a sword. It's going to reflect on the theme I'm going for for this parody character. Yeah, I think that's not too bad. Maybe I'll change the eyes a little bit. Yeah, maybe the, not so upset or mean or anything like that. I don't know. I'll, I'll see what happens, but this form is what I was going for. I think the hand should be bigger, though. So let's do that right now. Go right in, link your, your hands together on both both hands. Let's zoom in so I get it more precision. Go to our scale and then just really exaggerate the size of those hands.
In other words, I don't want this to be in proportion. I want it to be exaggerated on purpose. I, I, that's what I'm going for here. Is that too much on that hand? I think that hand looks a little weird. So what I could do is go in and stretch it out sideways. It's a little more relaxed now. That's better. That's better. Alright. At least in, in my opinion. And then we'll pull that a little more over there. There we go. But thank you so much for watching this and maybe if you learned something uh, I'm glad to hear it hear that um, but yes drawing is very time consuming process but if you're doing a cartoon it's a lot faster so that's another thing I love about cartoons like if this was realistic I'd still be drawing it but right now I'm already at the assembly stage now before I go into drag this into anime studio pro version 8 that, I, that I'm working with what I'll do is just put all these layers on any layer that's invisible will not import into that program so just have all the layers on and there we go that's our uh, parody of Dirk the Daring from Dragon's Lair and we'll go into Anime Studio Pro and go from there thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe comment like if you're not already subscribed um, if you're a fan thank you very much and thanks for watching have a good night